Welcome to Monsters and Multi Class. I'm Eliotti. I'm Jared Bornigal. And I'm Will Melden. And on this episode, we are covering uh, the Hydra from Pathfinder. So we, as in our continuation to cover more Pathfinder stuff, we're now covering the Hydra Pathfinder. This might start getting confusing as we go forward because there's like also a D&D Path Hydra as well, but it's the Pathfinder 2E Hydra. It'll be It's fun. not that complicated. You're overcomplicating it. The video title is going to say Pathfinder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Hydra, yeah, there's a surprisingly very a little flavor on this one within Pathfinder. The, it's in the best theory. Hydras are multi-headed, foul-tumbered, serpentine beasts with voracious appetites, widely feared for the regenerative abilities. That's it. <laughs> I mean, I think most people are aware of what a Hydra is at this point. They're like a very mythological creature, Hercules within the, myth- that's a level of mythology famous. Fought one also in the Disney movie version as well. Maybe that's the only place that happened and that's not in the Hercules mythology. I wouldn't actually know, but. <laughs> oh gosh, I don't either. <laughs> right? It's, it's, because, like, it's we... in the Hercules mythology. Okay, okay. I thought so. Like, Which I can picture all like, like old art of, of like, the 1997 Disney film. <laughs> The Greeks just claimed it later. Right. I'm sure people love that. You saying that. I'm glad that's out there on the internet. <laughs> can they? It, people can take jokes. I know. Oh, I, know. Um, yeah. I will say the variant Hydra, not that it adds a ton of extra lore, but it puts in a little bit where it just says that though, though rare, Hydras with more than five heads live in very isolated areas, sometimes guarding incredibly powerful artifacts. Uh, and then it goes on to talk sure. about how there can be basically frost hydras um but yeah that's that's it which yeah yeah i'll agree that's neat i want some frost hydras yeah yeah i mean so their their interest comes in their mechanics and how they have to be killed uh which is fair i guess it's like there doesn't there's not a ton to their motives and stuff they're just kind of beasts what you want yeah so let's just dive into those mechanics here. So this is a level six creature. Um, it is a huge beast. It has plus 17 perception, low light vision, um, and ascent in precise up to 30 feet. That's not something I'm super familiar with, but my understanding is like, it's just kind of another way for them to get a sense of what's around them. Skills, athletics plus 17, stealth plus 12, or it's plus 15 in water, plus seven strengths, plus four decks, Plus five con, minus three intelligence, plus two wisdom, and minus one charisma. So all across the board there. Uh, 23 AC and all around vision. I meant to look that up. Let's, I might cut that. Um, what is that? <laughs> or maybe we could leave it so it's this is very much like, hey, come learn this with us type bullshit. But uh, yeah, good question. What the hell is all around sincere? vision? The creature sees it. Oh, it cannot be flanked. That mm-hmm. is what all around vision means. That makes and a lot of sense. Okay. I just I wanna, keep all that. That's fine. That explains. I'm going to yep. double check that really quick. Yes. Okay. Because I, I was in, um, well, I, I was on like roll 20, so I wasn't sure if I was in Pathfinder 1. Yeah. So all around vision. Okay. Can't be flicked. Yeah. Makes sense because they're multi headed. Uh, 42 saves plus 15, reflex plus 12, will saves plus 10. Uh, HP, it has a separate two separate hp pools one for its body and one for each head its body has 90 and is impacted by hydro regeneration we will get to that and then each head has 15 and impact by head regrowth again we will get to that it's immune to area damage um and is a weakness of five against slashing so let's let's actually clarify that the head yes. has area damage immunity thank you yes and a weakness of slashing five the yes, body does not yeah. Um, just since we are new to Pathfinder and so I think a lot of our listeners may be as well clarifying what weakness means. Basically, if you do slashing damage, fi- like slashing five weakness means there will be an additional five damage added on to any slashing damage you do. My understanding is even if it's you do one damage, you're now doing six. Yeah. And I, I really do like the whole immunity to area damage portion, though, because I think that's come up a couple of times where a either... A, a creature in the books or one that I've created or something has like multiple parts to it. I think a Kraken's like the, yes, the but like the example. Kraken's tentacles are really common. Argument right. So it's like, if I cast fireball on the Kraken, does it hurt the Kraken's body and each of the tentacles? And this is just saying, Nope, doesn't hit the head. If you do AOE damage, it's just against the body. Yep. No, yeah, I appreciate how they, they thought that out and added it in. Yes. Um, and then they also have attacks of opportunities. So again, another kind of unique Pathfinder thing for anybody who's coming kind of learning this with us here. It's um attack of opportunities work 
basically the same as you would think that it's like how they do in fifth edition, but not everything gets them. Um, so they have them next to get even stronger with multiple opportunities, which we'll get to here. Okay. So the head, uh, regrowth is. A Hydra ordinarily has five heads. A creature can attempt to sever one of the Hydra's heads by specifically targeting it and dealing damage equal to the head's hit points. A, t- a head that is not completely severed returns to full hit points at the end of any creature's turn. A Hydra can regrow a severed head using Hydra regeneration. Next point down, we'll get to it. Um, it's, it's just all that self-referential stuff we always keep talking about in here where people keep trying to tell us like, no, 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 it's not that big a deal. And it's like, all right, it's like here's another and then another and you keep yeah. going down the list it, and it keeps referencing itself it keeps coming up it, yeah <laughs> all right a creature can prevent this regrowth by dealing acid or fire damage to the stump cauterizing it single target acid or fire effects need to be targeted at a specific stump but effects that deal splash damage or affect areas covering the hydra's whole space cauterize all stumps if they deal acid or fire damage if the attack that severs a head deals any acid or fire damage the stump is cauterized instantly if all five heads are cauterized the hydric dies so it's Really, the only way to kill it, best I could tell, is you have to cut off all of the heads and cauterize every stump. Yes. Which, Which comports with the myth to a T. That's exactly what Hercules had to do. Yeah. And I love that. I love different <clears throat> kill conditions, basically, because they're so common just over and over and over again, I, I guess, at least in 5th edition. And literally right before we started this, I was saying like, hey, let's not relate everything back to 5th edition. Like, it's a new thing. It stands on its own. Even I can't get away from it. Um, but I, it feels like so many monsters, it's like they have all these unique things and cool properties, but at the end of the day, it's just do enough damage till it dies. Except yeah. for maybe every once in a while you get something kind of unique where like, oh, you just have to do at least one point of fire damage while it's at zero. Yep, and that's actually what the the Hydra in 5th edition is as well. Uh, It has the multiple heads thing, obviously, but you don't target the individual heads. It's just whenever the Hydra takes 25 or more damage in a single turn, one of its heads die. If all the heads die, then the Hydra dies. And that's it. Uh, It does have the... It grows two heads back unless it takes fire damage, but that's really it. So... It, it doesn't get that feeling of fighting a Hydra across. And I know right. we fought Hydras in the past and it always felt disappointing once it got to that point of, oh yeah, we just did enough damage before it could recover. And it only gets like 10 HP per turn or something back too. So it really isn't enough to, to not have the damage outdo the, the regeneration. Right, yeah. For sure. Um, You know, let me read Hydra Regeneration as well, because these two very much relate to one another. Then we can kind of talk about what it actually takes to kill these things and that strategy. So Hydra Regeneration, the Hydra has regeneration equal to three times the number of heads it has. So again, it starts at five. Um, If a Hydra's body is missing any heads and the remaining stumps have not been cauterized, so the Hydra attempts a DC 25 fortitude save after it regains hit points from regeneration. Its fortitude save is plus 15. Just to note here, so that's DC 25 is not very high for it. Basically, it's 50-50. 10 or higher, we'll get it. On a success, one uncauterized stump regrows two heads. On a critical success, two uncauterized stumps regrow into two heads each. The Hydra can never grow more than double the number of heads it originally has, so that's a maximum of 10. The Hydra's regeneration only fully deactivates if all heads are severed and all stumps are cauterized, at which point it dies. So it's there's a lot going on there, and... This is one of those beasts where it very much makes sense for you really want to learn about it beforehand and where stuff like recall knowledge, recall lore, that sort those sort of abilities and features would be really helpful with the Hydra. Because if you don't know those specifics, that's going to be a lot of things that's hard to figure out and it's just going to keep getting worse. Yeah. And, and those are always difficult to run, but I think that with Pathfinder, it's slightly simpler where there's that, always that question of, do I know about X? Like, do I know that Hydras have this regenerative ability? It's like, give me a recall knowledge check and let's find out. You know, that's the the long and short of it. Uh, they are introducing something like that with, with 1D&D, with the, the study action that we mm-hmm. coincidentally just talked about uh, in our, our last episode. But um, yeah, it's, it's, it's nice though. It flows easily. I wouldn't expect, even if, if, players know 
for their characters to know absolutely everything about this. So it could be a, a cool way that somebody who's intelligent on these things can can shine for a moment as they relay to the party how to actually kill this. Uh, you know, then it becomes a matter of who's got slashing damage. Great, we're going to buff them and make sure that they are incentivized to attack uh, and, you know, maybe cast magic weapon on them, things like that. You really get into the the cooperative aspect of, of it. And, and this Hydra needs that cooperative cooperation in order to be taken down, I think. Yeah, because things really need to come together because every time on the Hydra's turn, the regeneration happens and a head regrows into two. And so what needs to happen on a turn is enough damage needs to be done to a head to lop it off. And then someone needs to cauterize it on that same round, cauterize it on that same round before the Hydra goes again. Otherwise, boom, two heads. And it just keeps going like that. It does cap it at 10, which I think is necessary because otherwise it's super at hand. But I think it also like run. (laughs) Yeah, I think it could be kind of a fun variant on this, especially for a bit of higher level of um, not putting that cap on it. (laughs) Let it grow and grow and grow. Uh, But either way. It's like, that's a lot. That's a lot of coordination. That's a lot of planning that needs to be done. It's not gonna, like, 90 hit points can be gone through pretty fast. Um, but it doesn't matter because it just keeps coming back and coming back and coming back. So I love that. I, I think that makes for really interesting fights. As you said, great teamwork, party dynamics, very much the type of beast to, like, plan beforehand, learn about it, figure out how you want to do this. And something that I'm not super familiar with and, and curious on is is how easy elemental damage is to obtain at this level. So creature level six, I'd expect the party to be four or five to level four or five to be fighting it. I don't know how accessible that that damage is. Um, so acid and fire might be a little bit tougher to get. Um, I don't know if, if you two I'm have any sure, ideas actually. on that. Yeah, my idea is that this is, while cool, it, Pathfinder has this dangerous tendency, and we ran into this in our mini campaign, of creating almost impossible encounters based off party comp. There mm. are party comps that probably could not beat the Hydra at, like, level 10. It just, they don't have the tools there. Where that... D&D just kind of passes it out, and their monsters also account for it by being pretty pretty easy to just blast through you're right it is dangerous i i not to make it too comparison-y uh but i do think that's okay right it, it should mean that if you are in a situation where you realize like you know how to defeat this thing and you're like whoa we are not equipped for this at all run get out of there and that means that you can keep the tension at at any level just because the the party comp doesn't match that one shot that we had was a terrible example because i didn't know how to balance encounters for pathfinder i chose something that was way too strong and basically it could have just flown around and kited you all into oblivion it was also a one shot so you had no reason to run it was either we're going to live or we're going to die but in a campaign running should always be an option even in a one shot it's just not Mm -hmm. an exciting end to a one shot so I'm all for that. I think that's great. If a party gets into this fight and realizes that they don't have anything, get out of there, get into town, buy yourself a bunch of fire, you know, flame bombs and and poison bombs, whatever, uh, sorry, acid bombs, and come back when you're prepared. Yeah, I love that a lot. You kind of create this, yeah, you keep the tension going, you kind of create this like nemesis out there where they like, the Hydra kicked your ass. And if you stuck around, it would have been a TPK because it would have just kept going and going and going. It's like, okay, we need to prepare for this, learn about it, come up with a plan, spend some resources, figure out how we're going to really tackle this, then go back and enact that plan. And that's going to feel so good for the players and so satisfying. Yeah, and it could be as simple as, you know, the spellcaster didn't prepare any acid or fire spells that day. And so it, it might not even be as complicated as we have to go back into town or something like that. But I appreciate that there is some some preparation needed for this monster. And again, coordination. Yeah. Um, and also, and I brought this up with the Aquazado episode where it's, here is another one where it just leans into being able to structure like a campaign around a kind of like monster of the week style thing. Um, where it's like, all right, there's this Hydra terrorizing a coastal town. And 
you need to you so this isn't about figuring out what the monster is it's just figuring out how the heck do you handle it and then that dives into some additional side quests to learn about it maybe get certain items you need to help handle it better and then you go and you take on the hydra i think i just keep seeing cool arcs like that being like really easy to obtain with these pathfinder monsters Mm because there's just so much to them all right moving on from that though they also have multiple opportunities a Hydra gains an extra reaction per round for each of its heads beyond the first, which could only, which could use only to make eye attacks of opportunity. It can't use more than one reaction on the same triggering action, even if a creature leaves several squares within its reach. And the Hydra must use a different head for each attack of opportunity it makes. Whenever one of the Hydra's heads is severed, the Hydra loses one of its extra reactions per round. Um, each of its heads beyond the first. Okay. All right, so now I'm confused. Because they start with five, right? Correct. So it has four extra reactions per round. Okay, so it just seems the, that phrasing of beyond the first just feels a little weird to me. Like they have like their one native natural head, and then but every time you meet them, there's four more, so there's five. But it sounds like they naturally have five heads. That's Correct. what tripped me up. I, I think, think it would just it would yeah. be poor wording if it said a Hydra gains an extra reaction per round for each of its heads, because then it would have six reactions, not five. Got it. Because by default, you expect everything to have one right, reaction. Right, have one. Okay, so basically, yeah, the number of heads they have is the number of reactions they have. So they have five, which can only be used for attacks of opportunity. So basically, moving around this thing is really, really dangerous. Yeah, one thing to definitely clarify with attack of opportunity is like, I know in D&D, it's just like, if you leave its reach, that's what triggers it. There's a lot more to it in Pathfinder. If you um, use any sort of move action within the reach, it's an attack of opportunity um and like that's this like standing up as a move action if you are within one square adjacent range and take stride and move to another square adjacent range that's a move action that triggers attacks of opportunities the ones that so obviously the pretty much the only thing that doesn't move is if you run right into range and then stop but if you're moving around someone who has attack of opportunities you trigger it what about and, step? I thought stepping. Yeah, there's like a step. It's like a five foot thing. That's a specific thing. It doesn't trigger attack of opportunity. I don't know if it's called step, but I know there is something like that. It is. Yeah. Whole so uh, you carefully move five feet. Unlike most types of movement, stepping doesn't trigger reactions such as attacks of opportunity. Uh, but you can't step into difficult terrain, which might apply for a hydra is if you're in water. Sure. So Not that's sure. definitely something yeah. to to keep in mind as you are. Yeah, you can't step using a speed other than your land speed. That actually is pretty important because the Hydra is a, a water-based enemy. So that's that's one way to obviously move around this, right, is if you're stepping. But if you take away their ability to step entirely, then moving around this creature is extremely dangerous. Especially with a reach of 10 feet. Yeah, very much. Um, ranged attacks also trigger them as well. And attacks of opportunities do not interact with the multiple attack penalty, which is huge. That's like the really big benefit of them. If you have one, it is not applied to it and it does not increase it for other attacks. So this thing is really dangerous. If you do anything to trigger it, um, that that's you know, five free attacks on you all at its full full strength to hit. Well, and it very much could be even more. It's not going to be five attacks on you at once. Because again, it can only do... It can't use more than one reaction on the same triggering sure. action. That's true. Okay. Yeah, that would be really bad. That's though. a good one. <laughs> so well, actually, next we're going to get to that, though. Yeah, but, you're right. You're right. Because there's focus to solve. You're right. I'm, I am I was kind of blurring those two. You're right. But so they could just keep doing them. Okay. Everyone's at risk. It's not just, yeah. oh, let me tank this one, and now we're out of reactions. It's everybody, stay on guard. Don't move next to this thing unless you have to. Right. And then don't leave. Yep. All right, moving on to actions. Also, this is where they put their speed for whatever reason. 25 feet on a swim speed of 25 feet as well. That's because moving is an action. So it makes sense to have speed there. Duh. Thank you. Yes. All right. um, Melee attack for it has a fangs attack. This is one action. It's plus 16 to hit, reach of 10 feet. Its damage is 2d6 plus 7 piercing. So if you are triggered attacks of opportunities, it would be this this fang attack of 2d6 plus 7 plus 16 to hit pretty likely to hit pretty hard hit um then as focused assault this is two actions the hydra attacks a single target with its heads overwhelming its foe of multiple attacks and leaving almost nowhere to dodge the hydra strikes with its fangs on a successful attack the hydra deals damage from its fangs 
Fang Strike to the target, plus an additional 1d6 damage for every head it has beyond its, the first. Even on a failed attack, the Hydra deals the damage from one Fang Strike to the target creature, though it still misses completely on a critical failure. This counts towards the Hydra's multiple attack penalty as a number of attacks equal to the number of heads the Hydra has. So that's kind of what we were talking about, the focus thought, where it can just turn all heads on one and just you know, do... So the first one did 2d6 plus 7, and then has four more heads, so then 66 plus 7. Piercing if it hits, which would be pretty nuts. That could get up to 10. That could get up to 12d6 plus 7 piercing for two actions. Yeah. Yeah. It, again, if, if you get to the point where this thing has all 10 heads, run. You have, yeah. you have screwed up in some fashion, and you need to regroup, because this is going to absolutely decimate the party. Yeah, and it does very much impact the multiple attack penalty very quickly. You're going to get to the minus 10, but it also does cap out there at minus 10. So that's plus 6 to hit. So it's a lot less, but it's two actions anyways. And like that that's a crazy amount of damage. And you don't need a... Yeah, each additional D6 is not an, an attack roll. It's an automatic, but it just applies to the multiple attack penalty. Yeah, and realistically, if it's doing its focused assault, that's probably the only attack it's taking that turn, unless it has no reason to move or do other things. Right. So it doesn't really matter that your next attack is going to be at plus six because you're not attacking again. Right. And then finally, it has Storm of Jaws. This is also two actions. The Hydra makes a number of strikes up to its number of heads, each against a different target. These attacks count towards the Hydra's multiple attack penalty, but the multiple attack penalty doesn't increase until after the Hydra makes all its attacks. So it's basically the opposite. Yeah. And I love that th- these two things are here where focus on one, hit out at all others, just good tactical choices based on how the parties align them. Yep. Well, it's like we we're all saying that. how, uh, where if you do have the one person who's got slashing damage and you kind of put all of your eggs in one basket and they're the only person in front of the Hydra, that focused assault is going to keep coming, and they're going to get worn down very quickly. Whereas if everybody is trying to participate, that Storm of Jaws is still going to wear everyone down really quickly, just kind of spreading it out. So in reality, you probably want the Storm of Jaws over the focused assault, because if, if you are hoping that one person with slashing damage or two people with slashing damage are going to be kind of carrying the lead here, then you you need them to stay up. And I, I could almost see a situation where somebody does want to stand closer because they're like, well, you know, that'll motivate them to 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 lash out and attack separately compared to our fighter just taking, you know, I, I don't even know if they've got an additional four D six. So that's like uh, 66 damage comes out to like 20 somethings in the 20s, 30s in that mm-hmm. range. Um, that's a lot when you're fourth or fifth level in, in Pathfinder. I mean, you usually have about like 70 HP around there. So two rounds and you, you could be done. I don't think you'd be as high as 70. Oh, I am. My third. I was level, just making a character at fifth level. At fi- I say my third level fighter has um like 40 something. You're going to get to 60, 70 HP around fifth level then. Oh, fifth. Okay. You're yeah, saying yeah. fourth. Okay. Never mind. No, fourth, fourth, yeah, okay. you're you're gonna get destroyed really quick. Yeah. So either way, let's just say you probably have about two turns going through a focused assault before you're running into problems and then gonna right. be at zero HP. So unless you think you can kill this thing in two turns, and I really don't think your average level four or five party can kill this in two turns, just with the need to cauterize all of the heads, unless you are perfectly set up for it where every you know three people have slashing damage and all of your attacks hit and you slash through the heads you get them all and then somebody does an aoe fire attack and great we did it all in one turn but that still feels rewarding because you had to be very very uh prepared to do that though it still probably doesn't feel fun for the dm (laughs) (laughs) i don't know if i have much more to say on it though i mean we kind of Talk I do. And... Oh, oh, right. okay. Hi. It's we, certain podcasters may have agreed to not incorporate fifth edition in this, and then failed to do that. But I never agreed. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. I'm not a liar. It's interesting that more or less this entire step block is accomplished with 
like half the text in D and D five E with some notable exceptions. But the big thing is because of the complexity that Pathfinder added, there's a new complexity that you have to really, really communicate with your players, especially if they're not used to stuff like this, that this, this is how it works. If you're the kind of DM who does not reveal that, this, this fight just doesn't work. Imagine walking into a D&D fight against a Hydra and saying, I attack the head. The DM's like, ha ha, yeah, welcome to D&D. That's not how it works. You just make an attack. That's, that's right. just how it works. That happens but, literally every time I teach somebody fifth edition. Yeah, it, there's no cold shots. This, you just like, it actually kind of sucks, but it is just the reality. It's like, hey, you can target the heads to lop them off and make this a possible fight. So I I like that whenever we get comments from people, this, these are the ones I do see. It's like, Pathfinder is so easy. It's, it, it's not, it's not. There are trade-offs. I like the way this Hydra is done, but it is just immensely more complex uh, for both sides of the table in a way. Yeah, I think that's fair. And it's a hard thing to just get the message across unless you're specifically putting down you know, miniatures for each of the heads, which it doesn't really make sense because then you're worrying about which space they're right. taking up and, and whatever. And that's not what you're trying to get across. What you're trying to get across is these can each be targeted. So unless you specifically say it, like you just said, Will, there really is no reason that somebody would just assume if they're coming from fifth edition and, and maybe less so with Pathfinder, but Pathfinder still doesn't have called shots from anything I've seen beyond maybe like class features and, and stuff. Um, it's not like you can do a headshot any other time. So the fact that this time you can, you're right. I think it should be probably stated specifically or make it part of the recall knowledge check where when you recall knowledge, it's like you say, oh, you need to cut off the heads. And then you say like dropping the veil, that means target the heads. You can target the heads versus the body specifically. So even if you want to hold off on saying it right away, because maybe again, you're, you're, you're replicating the imperfect knowledge that the player characters have, which is that if you just fought a bear, yeah, I might think it'd be really great for me to stab this bear in the head. But if its belly presents itself, I'm probably stabbing the bear in the belly. With the Hydra, it's like, no, 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 you don't want to stab it in the belly. Don't bother. Go straight for the head. That's that's part of the knowledge they need to get. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I would point out just in terms of a bigger discussion about like that stuff's hard coming to Pathfinder. That is very much a fifth edition bias. Because as you said, all new players try new called shots and then you have to teach them out of that. And so then for people who've been playing that they for years and years and go to Pathfinder and then there are like, oh yeah, attack specific body parts like the head in this case. And it's actually not even most creatures really have. Yeah, I was saying, I'm going anyways. for the, the third option, which is that this is not a thing in Pathfinder or 5th edition. This is really just right. monster specific. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, there's not called shots. And anyways, for brand new players to TCRPGs, like I don't think they're going to struggle with the idea of like, oh yeah, I could just attack the head. Because it feels natural to new players, to TTRPGs, as you pointed out, and then we beat it out of people in 5th edition. <laughs> because like it will not handle it. 5th edition just tries to get away from that so hard. Even in 5th edition's Hydra, as if you do 25 damage in a turn to the Hydra as a whole, a head falls off. <laughs> Whereas like, really that would have been the perfect opportunity to put in a mechanic like this. And they just refuse. So... But we're not talking about 5th edition. <laughs> no, we, this is not what that episode, this episode is about Pathfinder. <laughs> All right. Y'all have anything else on the Hydra? I do not. Okay. See, flavor wise, there's not a ton there, but I think it's also just a great beast type monster to be terrorizing anything. Ellie, I think you're spot on with it being like a, a monster of the week style thing that the party needs to learn about would be super fun, regardless of whatever you know, the context is. Um, speaking of fun without context, fan roll dice. <laughs> I didn't have any context. Wow. That's the segue. <laughs> That's the segue. <laughs> Uh, check out Fan Roll Dice for a lovely selection of metallic, gemstone, or resin dice, or liquid core dice. 
Um, they're literally liquid in the core. Uh, and use the code MM10 to receive 10% off your order. Free shipping on orders over 50. So you can really support the show by bumping that up, right? <laughs> so um, thank you as always to our patrons. Uh Cameron C, Ed G, Craig A, Brian H, Isaac M, Jeff W, Star Shinobi, McKinnon T, Vincent M, Barons, Bob F, Gray, Joe P, Muddleweight, Rick D, Sir Laugh-A-Lot, Sensibly 20, Tyler S, Adam A, and Rob K. If you want to check out the Patreon, you can head on over to monstersmulticlass.com slash support, forward slash support, where you can find our affiliates as well as our Patreon, where you can get early access to episodes most of the time. Uh, if you enjoyed or if you have thoughts on the Hydra, like, comment, subscribe, all of those YouTuber things. Um, I don't know. If you fought one in Pathfinder, let us know if we were right or wrong about how these fights go. Whatever. I don't care. Just leave a comment. <laughs> and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>